that something's raining. It's the breakthroughs are coming, and the harvest is around the corner. So we thank you. We appreciate you for joining today. So with that being said, we're going to bring up um, uh, one of our uh, elders and one of our leaders, and certainly uh, one of our leaders on Thursday nights as well, but also just a tremendous man of God. So if you don't mind, let's give a warm, resounding, and heartfelt welcome for our own Elder Jim Woolridge. Give us a good word. Come on up, brother. Amen. Oh, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Even when it rains, because we got seed in the ground. <laughs> and when we get seed in the ground, something grows, and then, then in due season, we get a harvest because we had seed in the ground. Lord, have mercy. I thank God for yet another opportunity to be in the house of the Lord. We feel like sometimes by the time we, we, we do the call to worship, sometimes we feel like we already had church. You know? So if, if you, you wasn't here for this morning's prayer and this morning's gathering and and this morning, we, 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 we kind of come up. Right about now, you know, the heat is. <laughs> and uh, I'm thanking God for all of that. Uh, you know, it's, it's been a lot of things going on, you know, in uh, our nation, in our community. And, and lately, the, the airways have, you know, just like been broadcasting the demise of a Tyree Nichols, who, you know, was uh, murdered by police officers. And, you know, we need to be in prayer not just for Tyree Nichols, but for that whole systemic era that's going on in, in this time. Because, indeed, whether you know it or not, it is systemic. Uh, it's not something that's just happening in Memphis. It's happening across the nation. And uh, as I was looking at the things that were happening uh, across the nation and watching some of the things that were on the television and that were being viewed and people were coming forth with information and different things, one of the statistics that really kind of grabbed me was that there are in our country some 1,100 people per year who are killed by those who were to serve and protect us. And so if there's a breakthrough that we need, Lord have mercy, we need a breakthrough in this era for those things that are systemic, that oppress and hurt and kill individuals in our country, whether they be black or brown or whatever color they might be. You know, they, you know, color has nothing, well, it has something to do, a lot to do with it, but it's not the overriding factor. What's overriding is we need a breakthrough. <laughs> That's overriding. You know, I don't know about you, but when I, I think about sometimes how, how we pray, sometimes we, we get real comfortable in our prayers, and we begin to pray for things that affect us, and not so much praying for things that affect others, you know, you know God wants us to be very concerned about others. So we might need a breakthrough for ourselves. The Lord knows others. <laughs> others need many breakthroughs. Not one or two breakthroughs. And so what happens is people get comfortable. Could I have Mr. Frog up here? I, you know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, you know how how to boil frog. You know that's a question. But you see, when Mr. Frog got in that pot of water, that felt good. You know, you know that that water was okay. It was it was comfortable. You know, in that water. You know, con okay in that water. But he didn't know he was in a pot. <laughs> and he didn't know that there was going to be some flame coming underneath that pot. And as the flame came underneath that pot, the water got warm. Frog says, huh, it's getting a little warm in here. But then after a little while, the frog was okay in the warm water. But you see, a little later on, the water began to boil. And by the time the water began to boil, the frog was so weak that he couldn't escape from the pot. Now, if you had tried to throw the frog into the pot of boiling water, oh, no, it, it wouldn't work. He would have just leaped right out because he would have had strength. But you by the time sometimes we realize that we're in hot water, we're too weak to get out. And if you're too weak to get out of the hot water, then what do you do? Call for help. <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Uh, and so I kind of wanted to, to think about I kind of wanted you to think about the way our nation is, our country, and our homes. Sometimes our communities are in hot water. And we need leaders that will take us to the throne of grace so that we can escape hot water. So I'm good with trying to tell you that today I found a way to escape hot water. Well, in our series, Preparing for a Breakthrough, uh, let me just, you know, get together in, in preparation for a breakthrough because I'm going to tell you right now that how you a breakthrough is you keep praying through a breakthrough. See, some people give up on prayer and they go to pro and go up to finances. They go to their friends and breakthrough. Prayer will get you through to your breakthrough. In, in preparation for a breakthrough, we need to just like unpack some truths and dispel some false perceptions. Truth is, <clears throat> we would all like to take up our residence street. <laughs> but in reality, there are no truths. Not here anyway. I mean, Try to stay in a trouble-free zone, living single. Some try to life. Others try a divorce. No trouble-free zones. I mean, right now, rent trouble, mortgage trouble, young people's troubles, old people's troubles, health troubles. Employment troubles, unemployment troubles. And when I say there are no trouble-free zones, I mean nowhere can we live trouble-free. So I can only ask this question. Who doesn't need a breakthrough? I mean, did I miss anybody in the audience? Did I miss anybody on YouTube, you know? I don't know. 
issue is some people need a breakthrough and don't even know they need a breakthrough. <laughs> They're just so deep in it, you know. They don't know. They, they just think everything is okay. Well, when you are thinking everything is okay and you find you're not in the house of worship, then I can tell you everything ain't okay. You know, when you avoid hearing the word of the Lord, everything is not okay. You see, you, you might be living good right now. You, you might be in a sweet spot, but just wait a little while. You know, <clears throat> in the biblical account, Job lived an exceptional life. But did he live trouble? No, he didn't. The children of Israel, God's chosen people, God loved them for sure and a special place for them. But was it trouble free? No, it wasn't. The Apostle Paul dedicated his life to the spread of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Was it trouble free? The part of the community that is biblically astute they know none of these were trouble free you see just because we might be experiencing some difficulty or just because things are really good right now that doesn't mean that we don't need a breakthrough but I got news for the community of God let's do all we can to hasten the day of our breakthrough. See, there are things we can do to hasten our breakthrough. Don't wait till the water's boiling in the pot. <laughs> uh, I, I'm looking at some of the things that I realized uh, uh, the children of Israel, they were okay when they went down into the land of Egypt, but there came some Pressure. You see, uh, pressure is one thing that really, really makes one realize that conditions are not the same as before. Uh, it's just fine until the heat gets too hot, like the children of Israel in the land of Egypt. But that lasts for a season. Uh, they came to know so much discomfort that they sought deliverance. And, and I've been in the pot before, and, and I knew so much discomfort uh, till I had to seek deliverance. But there was a precursor to deliverance in Deuteronomy 6. Can we put up the Deuteronomy 6 chapter verses 4 and 5, and it says, it says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. It says, Thou shalt what? Love the Lord thy God. But first thing it said, it said, Hear. O oh, Israel. And see that thing about hearing, you know, you, you got to hear something when you want to know something. If you want to know something, then I ask you, have you heard? It says, hear, hear children that I love. Hear because the Lord our God is one Lord. And, and, and that was important, so important then and so important. It was important because where Israel was going was to the promised land. And so he says, the Lord our God is one Lord. Well, he had to tell them that because there were a lot of other countries and 
a lot of other kingdoms around Israel. And many of these kingdoms had many other gods. Uh, they worshipped. Let us not worship any other god. Let us not rely on any other program. Let us not rely on any other social structure, not capitalism, communism, or any other isms, <laughs> but let us rely upon the Lord our God, for he is one Lord. And it says, thou shalt love him, <laughs> and love him with everything you got. Yeah. Love him heart, soul, and mind. And when you love him like that, you know, then you who's going to know that you love him. Of course, you should know he loves you. Some of us around like orphans, you know, acting like we don't even have father let alone have a heavenly father <laughs> you know we we want to treat our heavenly father sometimes like we might treat our earthly fathers listen sometimes ignore him sometimes uh, be okay sometimes and not be okay sometimes but our god is a god who says love him with all thy might that is that you will love him continually you know, for the God that we serve is the God of truth. He's the same yesterday, today, and eternally. He don't get tired. So what we do is just to take limitations off of our minds and expect the Lord God Jehovah to do a new thing like only he can do. Here we are now with the like them. They, 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 they came out of bondage in Egypt, but they only got to the Red Sea. And when they got to the Red Sea, I can imagine they were thinking, we're done. <laughs> it, it, it's all over. I can't swim across this. Yeah. See, a lot of us trying to swim out of our own issues. Instead of calling God <laughs> to get out of, to help us to get out of uh, the situations that we find ourselves in, I have depended upon this donkey to carry me, but now my donkey has fallen down. <laughs> Why my donkey keeps falling down, <laughs> but he keeps going left. <laughs> keeps going right uh, for those who were in the community of faith y'all know the story of Balaam and Balak and 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 how the donkey finally just fell down and Balaam began to beat the donkey and the donkey then spoke to him man's voice that that's not just a biblical story that is a biblical account of a man who was going the wrong way. Uh, I don't know about you, but when the children of Israel got to the sea and they couldn't go, made a way. So when you find yourself in the boiling water and you can't go any further our God same one will make a way for you it's a God who did something similar at the Jordan River for those who know the children of Israel were trying to get to the promised land but the Jordan River was there and they were saying, how are we going to cross this river? And so God gave them some instructions and 
they heard the instructions and they got ready to cross the Jordan River. And as they got ready to cross the Jordan River, they had everything up and they had the ark up and they had the leaders up. And when they stuck their foot into the water's edge, the water parted hither and the waters parted thither. God who was with Moses and John is with us. I don't know about you, but when I, I think about Joshua and how he had to take over after Moses took it, there was Israel trying to do a thing of breaking through. And as he was trying to do a thing of breaking through, we find that uh, things weren't going as swiftly as they thought. In, in, in Joshua, the 11th chapter, verse 18, it, it talks about how after years of war, Israel was breaking through and, and conquering territories from giants. How many of us are willing to wait on God for our breakthrough for seven years? How many are going to pay your tithe and come to worship service for seven years before you get your breakthrough? Who knows? Seven years might not be long enough. Uh, I, I'm still breaking through, and I'm on my journey for 40 years. Uh, more than 40, but, but God knows. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's one of the things where I have broken through, and I continue to break through. You know, you are breaking through, and you will continue to break through. Just keep working at it. You see, keep praying till you break through. All the time, like, like, like in the biblical account, in Second Samuel, verse 5, 18 through 20, we find that there was a time when David needed a breakthrough who was king of Israel. And the chapter reads, and the verses read, the Philistines also came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hand? And the Lord said unto David, Go up. For well, I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hand. And so David came to Baal Perazim, and David beat them up there. He smote them there. And the Lord had broken forth upon mine enemies before me as breach of waters. Therefore he called the name of that place Baal Perazim. Now, now, he called the name of that place Baal Perazim and I had said, why did he call it that? I mean, it's hard enough to pronounce some of these. <laughs> you, you, you know, you, you know, it was in a foreign language and everything, foreign country and he said, Baal Perizim. So I, I looked it up, and I found that Baal Perizim that David called them was because it was Lord or uh, masters of breakings through. <laughs> That's why he called it that. It was Lord or uh, masters of breakings through. And, and so I found some other things that we need to know in the scriptures. I found that uh, in, in James, the first chapter, it says, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth to all men liberally 
and upbraideth not. And it shall be given him. So now praying through your breakthrough. And like David, David inquired of the Lord concerning his enemies, concerning his troubles, concerning his obstacles, concerning those things that had him sorely pressed, sometimes depressed, and sometimes would want to make him. So I don't know. But when David got word, he says that, yeah, yeah, David, I'm going to deliver you from your enemies. I'm going to deliver you from your enemies. David heard that, but there was something that David had to hear before he conquered his enemies. There was a word that said, David, I don't want you to make a move until you hear the sound of moving, of going forth in the balsam trees. He said, don't make a move. Somebody, I, I read an, another, another scripture, and it says that these trees were mulberry trees. And he said, David, I don't want you to move until you hear the sound of marching feet in the tops of the mulberry trees. And I said, and David had to hear something. You know, and sometimes you might hear things that just don't make sense to you. <laughs> and, and this is how we have to follow the Lord. We might be hearing something that might not be making sense to us, but because we know that it come from the Lord because we know that we are doing those things that are good and those things that are right. Then we follow the Lord. Sometimes we don't even know what's right. <laughs> you know, so sometimes we just don't know. Just follow the word of the Lord. It don't matter whether you know it's right or not, but if it's the word of the Lord, do it. <laughs> it says, Nike says, just do it. <laughs> you know, and, and I understand but Nike wasn't talking about, <laughs> he wasn't talking about just doing the word of the Lord. He was talking about just buy some Nikes. <laughs> but nowadays, we have many things to be thankful for when we hear the word of the Lord and we ask for wisdom. For instance, there was yet another who didn't know what to do because he had never been king before. And he was the son of a king, but he wasn't a king before. And in line is probably not the same as being first in line. You know, being second is not the same as you being the one. You know, the one who has to stand so we got another word about the power of prayer. It's like praying through until you get your breakthrough. The power of prayer has much to do with the person that's praying. You trust me on that, whether, whether you know it or not. A lot to do with the person who's doing the prayer. You see, because... God already knows what's in your heart. And so you can say anything you want to with your lips. But God is already going to know what's in your heart. Okay. And so there was a man who was Solomon, the king of David, who prayed at worth noting that there were four elements in Solomon's prayer that a favorable response from God. He approached God first with praise and thanks. He approached God with all praise, thanks. For it was God who allowed Solomon his station in life. God has allowed each of us our stations in life, you know, and you might not feel like 
you like your station. But that doesn't mean you don't give God thanks for your station. It just means you got to get your attitude right. Because <laughs> your attitude is going to determine your altitude. <laughs> yeah. See, your attitude is also going to determine the response that you get from God. So here we were. Solomon didn't know that. That was number one. So Solomon also prayed with great humility. You see, he, he didn't just, you know, believe that he was great because he was king. He actually believed in his own inability. And, and that was what qualified him to receive supernatural, knowing that I'm not able. You know, it wasn't his education, his training, his skill level, his connections. These things, you know, might get us just very little help from God. Also, Solomon uh, defined himself as God's servant, ready to do God's will. Now, everybody knows what they want, what they want to do, where they want to go, but how many of us know what God's will is? And if you don't ask, <laughs> nothing wrong with asking. He said, for anybody that like wisdom, ask. <laughs> and I'll give it. And so there was Solomon knowing that a servant's task was simple. He didn't say it was easy because everything that's simple is not easy. You know, don't. So what happened to Solomon's task, he received, it was simple. And it was to follow orders. Uh, that's a simple task. You get an order, you follow the order. That doesn't mean it's going to be easy, but it does mean that you have direction. If Solomon had no thought of using God for his program. But his idea was, God, use me. And that should be like one of the themes of kingdom culture people. God, use me to do your will. Don't have to fit my program. I know, God, what I want to do. But I got to find out, God, what it is you want me to do. And so those were three of the things. Solomon also asked for a blessing. And we all do that. I, I, I'm, I can't imagine a child of God not asking for a blessing. But you see, there was something key about Solomon's asking for a blessing. Because Solomon's asking for a blessing was so that the people of God could be blessed. In other words, Solomon was saying, Lord, don't just bless me, but make me a blessing. <laughs> you know, make me, God, into a blessing that helps your people, that guides your people, that judges your people, that governs your people. That was Solomon's task. So the same principles still apply today when we learn to pray more for what God wants than for what we want. Uh, if we do that, uh, we're going to find out the response time to our prayer is, is cut way down. See, sometimes people are waiting on God, waiting on God, waiting on God. But God, where you at? God, I prayed, didn't you hear me? Yes, he heard you. Okay. But he's waiting on you to get something right in your heart. He says, love me with all of your heart. So get this right in your heart. 
get this right in your mind, get this right in your attitude, and then answer. Maybe I'm thinking about one who prayed. And while he was yet praying, God sent the answer. <laughs> it was his name uh, was Daniel. And Daniel prayed. And while Daniel was yet praying, God dispatched an angel to give him the answer. Biblical scholars, you know the story. The angel got held up. <laughs> you know, the angel, you know, didn't get to Daniel. Guess what? Daniel didn't give up. You know, Daniel said, I'm going to wait <laughs> on the... See, that's the attitude that we need to have. We need to keep on getting a word from the Lord. For instance, uh, in... Uh, First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. In First Kings chapter 3 and verse 9. If I can find that somewhere in my... Ah, there it is. We found it. We found that uh, it, it says, Give therefore thy servant. An understanding heart to judge thy people. This is Solomon. In that. He says, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge? Yes. Yes. So great a people. And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this. Yeah, because thou had asked for this, that I'm going to give you a whole lot more than what you asked for. That's the gospel according to Jimmy. <laughs> I'm going to keep giving you, and I'm going to keep pouring blessings on you, you know. He didn't ask for riches. He didn't ask for long life. He didn't ask for his enemies to be destroyed. He said, but because you have asked for wisdom to judge these people. I'm okay. You know, when you ask God for what God wants, the response time goes way down. See, the principles are important to know what kind of God we're seeking. What kind of God are we seeking? We're seeking a God who is kind and just and loving. We're seeking the kind of God who wants to give you everything that you ask for. Okay. Believe that or not. He wants to give you all you ask for when you ask for those things for him, not for you. When you're asking, I, I had an experience with God one time, and, and, and I, I, I needed a way to get back and forth to work, and I didn't have a car. So I told God, I said, God, yeah, I need a car so I can get back and forth to work, but here's the deal, God. <laughs> Anybody try to make a deal with God? <laughs> I said, God, you know I need a car to go back and forth to work. However, you know I've been going to church for a number of years. And you know, God, I trust you. And you know, God, that I'm leaning on you. And you know, God, that if anybody can produce for me a vehicle, then God, this is what the vehicle is going to do. This vehicle is going to carry me to visit the sick and shut in. 
this vehicle is going to carry me so I can carry communion to church members who can no longer come to church. God, there's some church members who are in the hospital and, and, and going to take this vehicle. And yes, I'm going to go to work. But I'm also going to do work for the kingdom of God. <laughs> I got a car. <laughs> and when I got a new, it was used. But there was no payments with the car. <laughs> the car came free of charge. And I said, I know that that is a blessing from the Lord. You see, I, I don't know if anybody's ever had a real, I mean, yeah, people go out and get, I said, God bless me with a car. I got a payment book that thick. And I'm like, ah, that wasn't the kind of thing, you know, the, you know, yeah. I mean, God bless me with this man. Now, wait a minute. When God blesses you with something, he has no sorrows with it. Ain't no, no bar about the other end. Ain't no spike on it, you know. When God gives you something, he, he just lets you have it because he knows how to give good and perfect gifts. There are principles when you do that. And so there's some other things that happen before you get to your breakthrough. I didn't want to be like some uh, speakers do, you know. But there are some speakers who, uh, you know, they cannot broaden their message and, and they cannot deepen their message and so they lengthen their message. And, and I, I don't want to be the kind of speaker that just lengthens his message. I'm trying to get something to you that you got to pray through your breakthrough. Jesus in, in, in Gethsemane was about to get to the point of his breakthrough. And so he went to Gethsemane and he had Peter and the two sons of Zebedee to go with him to the Garden of Gethsemane. And as he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, the disciples fell asleep. But Jesus said, oh, Father, yeah. <laughs> you know, please take this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. And he had to pray a similar prayer three times. So Jesus didn't know everything, which he did know everything. But he didn't know everything that the disciples were going to face. He just knew that they were going to face temptation. So he told them, you know, y'all pray with me so that you don't fall into temptation. So what happened? They fell into temptation. They were tempted to turn away and to fall from God. So I'm telling us, keep praying through your breakthrough so that you don't fall into temptation. When it was all over, I come to find out that Jesus' breakthrough was on the other side of Calvary. Yeah. Jesus' breakthrough came when, after three days, he was buried in the tomb. And then he rose up on the third day. And all power was given into him. Not only was all power given into him, but he opened up a way for you and for I to have eternal life. I want you to pray through your breakthrough. Your breakthrough might come on the other side of your issues. You know, you might have some issues, but your breakthrough don't come until God says it comes. It comes on God's time. And so we give God thanks and praise for allowing us to be here and to tell you to pray through your breakthrough and how you're going to hear something unless 
you hear the word of the Lord. So come to the worship service. Hear the word of the Lord. And the Lord of breakthrough is going to orchestrate a breakthrough for every one of his children. May God bless you. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we come, Lord, knowing that you are the Lord and master of breakthrough and breakthroughs. So we ask, Heavenly Father, for each one under the sound of my voice that you would grant unto them some breakthroughs. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would grant unto them some breakthroughs according to your word and according to your will. For we are to hear and we are to love the Lord our God with all our heart, with all our soul, and with all our might. And we give you praise and thanks. And I pray, O oh Heavenly Father, that you will continue to bless us here in kingdom, culture, ministry, according to your will, according to your word, so that we might be used by you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we ask it. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Ken. Amen.